Thank you, Jared. Hello, Kenny. Welcome uh, to 360. Thanks, Robert. Tell me, most people would look at Port Adelaide and say that you perhaps overachieved last year. Finished fifth, 12 wins to get in the final, the big win over Collingwood. Does this season define whether Port Adelaide overachieved last year? Oh, no, I don't think so. I think it, it goes about with what, what work we put in and how hard we work as the season unfolds. Last year, we, we achieved things on the back of hard work. And if we do the same thing this year, you know, whether we, we win more or win less, there's a few things that go into that. And it's not just, you know, who we play, when we play. It's, it's a few other things that happen. We had lunch recently and we spoke at length about what Port did really, really, really well last year. And, and I thought it was the kids who really embraced what you're trying to get out of, out of the football club, out of the team, the way it plays. Will the improvement come from those kids, again, taking another, another step in the, in, the, in, the, in the bigger stakes, in, in understanding the, the way you want to play? Oh, look, no doubt they will, but so will the rest of the side. I mean, that's, that's the key thing for us is that, you know, as a club, we have to improve everyone, not just the kids. The whole club has to improve, and we know to do that, you know, we, we're going to be a better team if we can do that, but we won't do that if only two or three improve. What's the, what's the one area you've been working on? Is there one area or is it across the board? No, nah, look, it's the simple answer is across the board, but we certainly put a lot of focus on our contested ball and our ball use under pressure, and, you know, they're two things that we need to fix up pretty quick. A lot of people talk about Port Adelaide, and they talk about... Travis spoke and, you know, he went to an, an A grader last year and Trango's really important at the back and Schultz, you know, for a recruit has been fantastic. I'd, I'd, I'd put it to you that I reckon your ruckman, Matthew Lobey, might be uh, not your best player, but perhaps maybe your most important. Oh, look, there's no doubt he's a significant player. We played him in the back half of last year on his own as a ruck. He had 30 more tackles than anyone else on our side, so he's a very important player for us. But Brent Renouf's had a really good uh, pre-season too, so he's up and about. So, yeah, no doubt Lobes is one of those players that we really do rely on. Ken, uh, Chad Wingard is a favourite of the coach, and I can understand why. Is there any danger that there might be any hangover from his breakout year last year? No, Michael, I don't think so. I think Chad's pretty driven. He's, uh, you know, he loves performing when the, when the game's on, and I think that's uh, what you'll see the best of Chad again this year is that you know, he's, he's attacked his pre-season really well. He's ready to go. You can tell he's probably mindful himself, I think, of last year, and he wants to make sure that it's not just a one-hit wonder. Let me ask you about one other player. Everyone in Adelaide, from both persuasions, talks in glowing terms about Hamish Hartlett and even sort of says he's a future Brownlow medalist. Had a lot of injuries. Are we ready to see the best of him? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Hammer's at that stage where he's, uh, he's right to go. And as you said, he unfortunately had another shoulder operation at the end of last year, which was a bit freakish. But otherwise, he's in really good form. Last year, I think he started to establish himself as, a, as an elite midfielder. He's still got some way to go. But I think if he continues that improvement at some stage in the next couple of years, we will see a pretty handy player. Ken, is John Butcher going to make it? And will this year determine that? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Butch is, look, he gets a lot of pressure, but that, that's just the role he plays, the position he, we, we need him to fill. And, uh, you know, it's one that he has to stand up and fill. But he's had, he's had his best pre-season. That gives him a chance. And I, and I know that's the most important thing. If you get a good pre-season, you get a chance to come out and play. And hopefully he does a little bit of that this week. A lot of players yeah. are recruited for a reason, Ken. And Jared Pollock obviously falls into that category. What do you need from him? Oh, look, we need a lot of development from Jared. There's no doubt he's, uh, you know, he's been really good so far in the NAB Cup in his pre-season. But there's so much upside in Jared Pollock. We know that you know, we brought him here for, for his outside run and his ball use. But he's been incredibly impressive to us inside, which has surprised a few. Robbo, finish yourself. Yeah. Oh, I will, Jared. <coughs> we watched Port Adelaide play at Amy, 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 Amy Stadium and, and I, I feel that as a twilight performer, Port Adelaide were able to embrace the crowd and the crowd embraced Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide and Adelaide are coming here to this new, wonderful ground. There's no atmosphere here yet. No one owns it yet. How important is it, do you think, Port Adelaide grab hold of this football ground? Well, it's traditionally, it's Port Adelaide's home ground. We come back here and we look at, we're look. we excited by that. We know the Port Adelaide fans will just embrace it. They'll, they'll fill the stadium and they'll, uh, they'll get us up and about again, like they did last year, as you say, to Amy. They'll make Adelaide Oval a pretty dangerous spot for any opposition to come to, and hopefully our players will help them get that on the scoreboard. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Robert. Robbo and Kenny, uh, Robbo, we'll see you back here tomorrow night. Enjoy the rest of the launch. Thanks, fellas. So that showdown, Mike, which mm -hmm. is such a fixture, and the Adelaide Oval itself, and I detected just a note of real caution in the question you asked Brenton Sanderson earlier on well, with the Rolling Stones and a week later. Let me admit, I'm not a horticulturalist, <laughs> okay. right? but I've seen the damage done to Etihad Stadium and to the MCG for at least 10 days after big concerts, and we heard Sando say that Amy Stadium was three months recovering from Bon Jovi. Mm. Now, I cannot believe that there must be a solution here because I cannot believe we would have this huge event. It's going to be a monumental event and have a ground with a patchwork quilt in it with dead grass on mm. it.
Can you? Uh, when you put it in those terms, it's hard to argue with you. But, but surely they wouldn't allow this to happen, would they? Well, it's going to happen. As presumably mm. this is all linked into the way that the ground has been developed and how money is going to be made. And this will be the real money spin of the Rolling Stones. And, and then the showpiece well, is the uh, footy. I would be extremely disappointed if uh, the ground wasn't pristine. I mean, Amy Stadium has got a perfect surface. Mm. If that's taken three months to recover from a concert, not sure how Adelaide Oval's going to do it in seven days. I think you're going to end up extremely disappointed. <laughs>